Winning proposal, a $3.10 favourite now. Sintilla's been very well backed. Her trials have been nice, prepared by Lesbridge, this filly, and Sintilla and Vanessi best trying to beat the favourite winning proposal. They're locked and loaded now. Two-year-old filly's maiden, over 1,100 metres. Now, the horse one from the outside has just gone up in the air. Alongside winning proposal. Ready now, racing. Dream Alive bungled the start right out the back. Winning proposal handled the start nicely. Back in a tick there. Scintilla is a midfield as Red Envelope goes forward and Vanessi as well. So Red Envelope leads from Vanessi. Winning proposal. What a back in a tick being restrained on the outside as Sister Day pushing through. Then came Lua Bob from Dream Alive. Deep Joy. And Scintilla has been taken back to last. So Red Envelope's got the lead all on its own now by a length and a half. Winning proposal sits on the outside of Vanessi. A length then to back and a tick and a wide par from Sis today. Then came Lua Bob. Deep Joy, Dream Alive and Sintella about eight off the leads last of all. So Red Envelope being felt for as they turn the corner. Vanessi's got plenty of room to go up the inside and the favourite winning proposal the outside. Inside the 300 and winning proposal moved up. Vanessi on the inside is the danger. It's winning proposal and Vanessi. They're drawn clear. Sintella's coming with a big run late but winning proposal is getting the upper hand and from Vanessi and winning proposal the first favourites home beating Vanessi Scintilla's come from last to run third in front of Sister Day good gap back to the rest Deep Joy Red Envelope folded up further back to back and a tick from Dream Alive uh, despite the bad start there it managed to beat one home and that was Lou above Winning proposal gets the win, and it's a milestone win as well for trainer Chris and Buchanan. 300 wins, Nashra Willer, barrier nine, and it managed to overcome that and stave them all off. Vanessi looked to have its chance there, $1.60, had the leaders back, and ultimately couldn't run down winning proposal, and Scintilla's the horse that I think many will be throwing in the black books, off the back of what, on first inspection, looked a moderate tempo to launch from near last and run into third, was very impressive on debut. One, twelve, eight, and 9, but it is the two-year-old daughter of Shalar who gets career victory number two. Yeah, Nasha Willer made light work of that wide gate, put her into that position right on top of the speed, and she was brave, 59 kilos. So gave away a fair bit of weight to the second horse with 55 and a half and uh, she ran right through the line. So uh, she's building a good little record, this filly. That's now the two wins from the four career starts and built off that first up performance against the older horses. Vanessi, no real excuses there, had her chance, but she's knocking on the door and Scintilla was an eye catch. Had to be dragged right back from the gate and she made steady inroad all the way to the line. So, yep, follow her with a bit of confidence going forward. But good win, the winner, 59 kilos. OK, hopefully we'll catch up with Kristen in two ticks. As for Scintilla, uh, we touched on that horse there. Brad was saying it was an impressive close, a $16,000 purchase. I reckon they'll be getting a bit out of this horse. It was purchased at the English 2023 Hunter Thoroughbred Breeders Association sale, and I did know that four out of the five siblings to race have won. So uh, that dam is capable of throwing a handy one. Kristen's just making her way over now, and we'll have a quick chat to her, and it is... Nice to recognise these milestones. We have a couple of other pending milestones coming up today. Uh, Chris Waller's camp, uh, they are looking to crack that $50 million mark. I don't think that'll be today, despite having runners in multiple states. I dare say that might be on Saturday. And Gay and Adrian are actually equal on their record as a partnership for winners in a season. So another win for them today, and they'll, and they'll break that. Of course you can come in. Of course. <laughs> that's the dynamic duo. Uh, congratulations. As I understand it, that's a milestone win. It, well, it's our 300th winner for the stable. Yep. Fantastic achievement, and clearly something you've been keeping an eye on. Well, everyone keeps reminding me. I wasn't <laughs> keeping an eye on it at all. But um, no, I'm very proud of, of the team, and they do an enormous job. I'm, I'm very grateful. Tell me about winning proposal. Just a really lovely filly, out of the box since she arrived. She's just very natural. Um, obviously, we, we started in the Millennium. She was fairly impressive there at only her second start. She's got a will to win. She's a, she's a little greyhound, really, isn't she? she but is. she's strengthening up, and I think she's only going to continue to improve. OK. Whole camp's pretty happy with that. <laughs> mate, uh, KB and Vardy's, mate, we're on fire, eh? <laughs> Batman and Robin, dynamic duo. How yeah, good. Well it's done. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Righto, let's get to Shani with Nashra Willer. Nash, um, no, I know that was your first sit on her, but uh, she dug deep and she was gallant. Yeah, she's, she's a busy little thing and um, very competitive. You know, she, she wants to be a racehorse, no doubt about that. But um, 
you know, I can just see her going on to better things as she gets older and, and more experience. And, um, no, the, you know, well done the team. They've got a nice, nice filly on, on their hands. Just quickly, how is that track? Yeah, look, I, I think it's, you know, without jumping the gun, it feels closer to a heavy seven than it does a, a nine, you know what I mean? So a slow seven than it does a nine. So, I mean, obviously she handled it quite well. So it's interesting to what the boys thought they got back a bit. But to me, it's, um, you know, definitely improving surface. What about Nash? Yeah, congratulations, Nash, and he gets one back on James McDonald in that premiership race. One, twelve, eight, and nine. Winning proposal makes it career victory number two and start number four, and they're doing a fantastic job with her. She's won well. Uh, she's beaten Vanessi. Uh, win won't be too far away for that galloper. And the twelve in for second, Cintella has run well, and so too Sister Day there, horse nine. One, twelve, eight, and nine. One race down. Yeah, how good winning proposal. Win number 300 in the career of Christian Buchanan. It's uh, quite an achievement. Good on you, Christian. Uh, 300 career wins, and that's a two now for winning proposal. Two out of her first four, so she's building a tidy little record. $50,000 uh, English Premier yearling sale purchase last year, and doing a good job for the Vardy Thoroughbreds team. Nasha Willa winning the first. We're off to a short break, and then we're heading to Doombin for their third up next. From Vanessi, and a cracking debut by Sintilla, crying out for more ground. First is over 1,100 metres, and race two as well. The valet David Mills for the two old Colts and Geldings. And more Jude has shown plenty of speed at the trials, trained by the Hawks family, Zach Lloyd in the saddle. And more Jude now is the last to move in. Into 420 and Tarp Holden into 175. Heavily back favourite. There'll be a few of those for Godolphin today. Ready to run. And we're on a heavy eight now. Reassessment of the track following the first. So a heavy eight here at the farm. Racing down the second, and Morju jumped nicely from the wide draw. Not sure if they're going to push on, though. Scorching Legend whipping through on the inside. There's a real clump here. So Scorching Legend on the fence, Morju wide out. Uh, going between runners, Il Pesero, it metaphorically, and now Tarpolin is driving through on the rail. So very wide out, Morju without cover. Buckingham Palace off the speed from just Google me, Bo de Kuna. King of Dragons, last of a bunch field. Scorching Legend ahead in front to Il Pesero. Then metaphorically tarpaulin with cover on the rails. Morjude without cover the outside of Buckingham Palace. They've got 450 to go. Scorching Legend and Il Pesero stride for stride from metaphorically. Tarpaulin bolting behind them looking for room and pulling to the outside under a vigorous rider's Morjude. Into the straight Scorching Legend lead. Now the favourite gets the run tarpaulin. With Morjude hanging tough the outside of metaphorically. Uh, up the inside is Tarpolin. Morjude wide out. Building up good revs here, Morjude. Morjude a half in front to Tarpolin. And Morjude, that's been a good win. Morjude back as a gelding, beat Tarpolin. Metaphorically third. Followed in by uh, Buckingham Palace was next. Then came El Pasero from Scorching Legend. A good gap to King of Dragons. Just Google me. And Boda Kuna was last in. 12, 11, 9, and the one will run fourth, but more Jude gelded and is back an improved horse, no doubt about that. Another two year old winner for that star sire into sort. He could be anything as a sire, this horse, honestly. It's been an amazing season. Uh, but more Jude gets the win for Team Hawks, and congratulations to Zach Lloyd as well. Race kind of turned upside down. Buckingham Palace wasn't up on speed, as many have predicted. And truth be told, considering it was a little sluggishly away, it's run pretty well into that fourth spot. I thought Tarpolin had every chance, maybe running in the non preferred, but apart from that, he's struggling to find excuses and metaphorically could improve. Yeah, once he bumps out there, the odds on favour, you thought here we go, he's going to let down, but Marjud stuck with him and was too tough at the finish, so had been well set up, just trolled there last Friday, and uh, when the race was there to be won or lost, he dug in, so that gilding operation has obviously done the trick, a uh, big improver from what we saw on debut, and what was a pretty deep race at Canterbury back in February behind Gatsby, so he's on the board, gaps back through the field, Tarpolin uh, goes down today, but his turn is just around the corner, metaphorically, uh, given the others had the benefit of race experience, boxed on quite well, and I agree with Buckingham Palace, so it wasn't the best in the stride. We thought he'd lead, he didn't, so out of the new string to his bow, and uh, he was strong enough that last little bit. But Marjud, too good there, the second favourite. 
Yeah, I think Scorching Legend is a horse worth addressing as well. I know that for the second race in a row, Scorching Legend, Legend has led them up and capitulated at about the 150, but you get the impression that it might be a better horse with that cover. Twice in a row now, it's kind of had to lead through default and today because Buckingham Palace and a couple of others just missed the start. So while today wasn't much of a run, uh, Scorching Legend with two runs under its belt might be an improver next time for Les Bridge. But as for our winner, I'm more Jude, uh, you can't do too much more than that. Uh, gilding operation has clearly done the trick, was beaten there at Canterbury fairly convincingly by Gatsby, who is pretty handy, uh, must be said, but I uh, was well beaten some seven and a bit lengths on that occasion. Today though, with a nice run in transit, was able to camp just off and then launch down the outside. A lovely win, wasn't it? A uh, very good win. Uh, you know, he did it in style and he probably did it the hard way as well. So the gelding operation seems to have done the trick with him. On that note, did you notice any difference behaviourally pre-race as well? Look, he's always been a pretty relaxed horse, uh, but obviously his mind wasn't on the job in his races, which we saw last prep. So um, obviously that's turned around and, uh, you know, a great result for, for everyone, all the owners. Looks as though you might be able to have a fair bit of fun now. So is the plan, do you think, one run this prep or we might see this galloper again? Uh, look, we'll see how he comes through today and then make yeah. a decision. So it's always sort of a bit of one run at a time and um, the boys are always really patient with them. OK. They're doing a good job and so are you. Well done. Thank you. Team Hawks get... Yet another win on the board, and they'll be happy to see this son of Tussort get a win. Uh, Shani, we were talking before about these Tussorts, the two-year-olds. Honestly, they've just been sensational this season, and definitely a side to watch next time. It went around pretty cheaply. I think it was 20 plus thousand of the stallion fee last season. I don't think you'll be getting you a look in at that price ever. anymore, 100 plus potentially. All right, Zach just unsettling this fella and we'll have a chat to him about this uh, gelding who we actually trialled up at Rose Hill last time. That was his first sit on him in a trial. I don't know if he's had a lot to do with him behind the scenes, but it was a nice win and I'm sure you were taken by that victory this afternoon. Yeah, I was taken by him the other week when I trialled them and good to see him do it today. That was a, a very, very good win. Did he always travel like the winner or were you ever worried? Oh, I was worried when the barriers come out. I knew it was going to be very tricky from where I was. and I was three, four wide there, no cover, the majority of the race. So for the horse to, to be strong late and um, tough it out was good. I, I was very happy with the way he relaxed there. He, he was a bit racing in his trial, whereas at least today I could keep him away from those horses and he relaxed nicely. Be a fair bit of improvement left him, you think? Yeah, for sure. By, by the look of him, he's still very winter Cody and um, he's still quite big in size. So... I think um, he's only going to improve with time and, um, yeah, it's very, very good training effort by the Hawks. Well done, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations to uh, Zach Lloyd. Gets another city winner on the board in what's been another brilliant season. 38500 was the stallion fee for Tassort in 2024. Oh, we won't be seeing that again. More Jude, too good for Tarpaulin. So Snoop is in. This is coming out. Mythical Moochie's coming out. Late scratching here, Mythical Moochie at 1.37. So Mythical Moochie, a late scratching. Okay, so we're good to go now. Stand by. There's the light. Ready? And they're racing. Sweet Patriot White out handle the start well. So did Love and Light is ridden to lead. But there's a fair bit of speed here. Tapani whips right up on the inside of Joy Rider. Tondu lands in third. Then Sweet Patriot, Love and Light and the favourite ground the outside. Further back to Demibi from My Shalom. And Snooper is right out the back. Tapani shows the way from Joy Rider. Two lengths to the plunge runner day Tondu. Two lengths to Sweet Chariot, followed then by Love and Light on the the inside of Graham, two for the back to My Shalom from Demibi, and last of all is Snooba racing to the home turn and Tapani, a narrow leader from Joy Rider. Daytondu hasn't been popped the question as yet, followed by Love and Light, Sweet Patriot, and now Graham gets to the outside and runs on with purpose. Joy Rider moved up with Daytondu and quickly Graham on the outside. It's Daytondu and Graham settling down to fight it out. Daytondu going well here. Daytondu kicking hard from Graham, a gap back to Love and Light. 
right, but Daytondu is going to land big bets to win this. Daytondu by two lengths to Graham. Love and Light third. Not sure. Four Sweet Chariot and Demibi, followed by My Shalom. A big gap back to Snoober from Joy Ryder and Tapani. The two, Dayton Do was absolutely hammered in betting. $2.70 on the local tote, $1.20 the place. Tim Clark, you could see, he knew he had the leaders covered. He was waiting for Graham up on his left shoulder. And the second that horse loomed, he said, it is go time. And Dayton Do put them away quickly, the three-year-old son of Epaulette. Graham has run well, has just bumped into one with that race fitness. A uh, bit too good on the day. Love and light, much the same could be said. Was tracking Dayton Do, but got completely out sprinted in the straight and it looked as though the 11 might just stick the head down in time a horse that was over racing early doors is in a photo with the three for that fourth spot and despite not getting the bob it will in fact run fourth so two 13 8 and 11. It gaps through the field so it should be a good form reference going forward so he had played played brides made largely in his career to date but good to see him break through Dayton do on the back of a, a great ride there a very neat ride from Tim Clark just popped him in behind the speed always traveled sweetly Graham as you say, did it pretty easily to get up outside him. You thought, here we go, it's going to be a, a race. But Dayton do to his credit, one and one going away on the line. So he's a horse that will gain plenty of confidence from that. I wouldn't be dropping off Graham. He's still a little bit green, still a little bit new. And he was a two-year-old against the older horses. Held the rest easily enough. Our love and light boxed on quite bravely. Keen to see her probably on firmer footing where she can really use that speed. So Dayton do lands really good bets, uh, as you say there, Ben. So $2.70 on the local tote. Yeah, and a horse that's always had a pretty short SP profile. Like, you yeah, look back last prep, uh, was rolled by Ducas, who's pretty handy. We know that. Then went around $1.35 against Decent Front, ran second on that occasion. Always very popular with punters, but not as popular as today. Five into $3.20 and got the job done. Well done. Yeah, it was great to see. He's obviously um, run a few places in his career, and a few times he's loomed up and looked like the winner. And, and look, I just had a thought about it, and we've played with a bit of headgear and and, and uh, I think coming back to the 1100 and chasing a bit of speed was, was probably the key to him today. Yeah, so I mean, you could tell that Tim was just giggling to himself, that he knew that he had the leaders covered, but he was very keen to wait for that Godolphin galloper outside him before he said go. It was quite patient. Yeah, it was. It was a great ride. Uh, Tom did, worked out really well for him, but I probably like the fact of that when he's got stuck in him, he's went away with it late yeah. in the end, and, um, and he's done a good job, and he's, he'll build confidence from it. No, he's done really well. So have you. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations to the entire Fiverr team. They get a, a win there with Dayton Do. And, yeah, Graham loomed up on the outside, as Brad mentioned, post-race. And you thought, OK, this is going to be a tooth and nail battle down the straight. But in fairness, this three-year-old, he's put them away pretty comfortably. Uh, the margins, I can't quite see the semaphore board at this stage. I'll get them in a tick, but uh, well over a length. The margin, I would suspect, Tim Clark gets yet another Winner, his season going from strength to strength. And the 13, 8 and 11 run in to complete that first four. I think Sweet Patriot's the one, Shani, out of those four that there might be a fair bit of improvement there. The early race manners, it just had the mouth open and was keen to get going and, and just fighting against the jockey who was trying to restrain. Yeah, she, I think she may be a filly that can do a little bit wrong. She went out with the pony, which was nice and settled, and, and it kept her switched off. But I think uh, she might be a bit temperamental, and uh, obviously race experience will certainly help her cause. But this fella today, at start number five, he breaks through. He's been building up to this win. I've always kept a close eye on him, and he was very deserving of that. And the fact that he'd had one run coming into this, Tim, really helped him today when he let down. Yeah, he was good. Look, he, he's obviously been... a situation like that previously and and hasn't got the job done so it was time for him to stand up and and sort of live up to those expectations that that Dave and the team had of him early on and he couldn't have been more impressive today. They rolled along out in front and you got a sweet uh, sit just in behind them you always travelled like the winner? Yeah I did um, sort of coming to the turn when I just felt for him and to get him right really on the bridle he he travelled up underneath me really well and 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 if anything probably got there a bit soon on him than, than I would have liked but I couldn't disappoint him either at the same time so I had to, had to go with him and I could feel James sort of breathing down my neck but um, as I said he was he was in for the fight today and he, and he come away and won well. Think he has an upside? Yeah he, look he's, he's got good, good ability and hopefully with that win under his belt now he'll get a bit of confidence and, and go on with it. Well done. Thank you.
Two lengths by one and three quarter lengths. The margins in the end, so gaps through the field. But Dayton Du gets that first career victory at start number five. Graham, uh, no doubt, a run of a horse with plenty of promise. Um, probably just gave away that race fitness, and that might have told in the concluding stages. Love and Light runs third, Sweet Patriot fourth. Two, 13, eight and 11. Okay, good on you, Ben. De Tondu, yeah, got into a 270 there at the to uh, at the end on the tote, so he was very short there at the end. Graham, James, uh, James McDonald having a, a frustrating day so far. Three races down, a fourth and two seconds. The run last time, our last preparation was a cracker behind a really good one from John O'Shea's stable. So. Um, where there's smoke, there's fire. I think we'll see a good run. Uh, whether it's a flashing light for next time, we'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, that's one at odds that clearly a few punters have latched onto here, the 12. But 13, a hot favourite as we head to Darren. Nick moves into line. And they're all set now. Light is on. Race four here at Warwick Farm. So, Tomb, the odds-on favourite. James McDonald, McDonald just getting himself sorted there. Looks to be right now. Gates are back. They're off and racing. Satoon, the favourite, only jumped fairly off the inside. The stablemate drift netter jumped a little bit better. Ringer Rosa was nicely in stride. What a peach is going forward as well. And looking for the lead, it would seem. Uh, Lulu Mongestes is back a little bit on the outside of Let Me Rain. Then came River de Moore. Satoon settles well back in the field. On the inside of Spirit of Storm there in the yellow jacket and thrill falling away to Serene Neck. So drift net races to the lead now. Drift net out by a Half length on Water Peach with Let Me Rain racing to third on the inside of Ringer Rosa. Then came Reva de Moore, uh, three quarters to Satoon there in the white cap. The outside uh, at this time is Spirit of Storm together there with Lulu Mon and two lengths away to Serene Nick. So Drift Let leads approaching the corner, Drift Net out by about a neck or so to Water Peach on the outside. Then the long price, Reva de Moore, Let Me Rain, Ring a Rose to Lulu Mon and Satoon will ride for luck on the inside as Drift Net straightens at the 300 and Drift Net shows a great kick here. Opened up by two or three lengths. Where's Satoon? Tomb. It's got all the chasing to do. It'll be flat out running a place. And Driftnet goes into another gear. And Driftnet's off and gone. Lulu Mon rattles home into second. Getting up on the inside. Serene Nick will grab third. Then Let Me Rain. Further back, Reva de Moore. Further back, What a Peach. So Tomb made no headway at all in the straight. A gap back to Spirit of Storm. And last to finish was Ringer Rosa. Well, it's Godolphin that prevail in race number four. Maybe not the way most suspected this may go, but $7.50 and $1.80, Tommy Berry gets the win and a pretty comfortable one to boot. The six, Lulamon continues to run so well this preparation. A gap back to third with Serene Nick filling that spot and the 12, Let Me Rain, ultimately running into fourth. And as we mentioned pre-race, maybe one that we expect to run that bit better over that bit further. But a nice first up run for Joe Pride and the new stable there. Oh, that was impressive, Drift Net, and we'll discuss the stable mate a little later. Yeah, so it took her nine starts to break through, but how often do you see that? Once they learn how to win, they go right on with the job, and now all of a sudden she's won two from ten. So straight out of maiden grade, uh, and she's taken that big step forward. Was suited uh, because there wasn't a lot of pressure on paper, but she made the running, and she didn't fall in. Uh, she gapped them at the finish. So obviously a, a horse still with a bit of upside. A lightly raced filly there by Exceed and Excel. So there were a few closes. Uh, Lulamon does continue to race well. She's been up for a long time, but uh, kept chasing the line. And Serene Nick, probably in the inferior going towards the inside, so you can score her up a touch. Uh, she just sticks the neck out in time to run third. But times and margins, the winner dominant. Yeah, it certainly was. And as you mentioned, six minors before that last start win. And confidence does amazing things. Headed there to Geelong for back-to-back -back runs and managed to salute our last start as a $2.50 favourite. Interestingly enough, from an SP side of things, has jumped favourite the past four starts. Today going around $7.50 with the well-favoured stablemate in Sutumbe dominating the market and gets the job done. After all, that's probably... Got a positive ROI across his career so far. Driftnet, uh, really, you can see the the importance of confidence there off the back of that last start win. Well, it certainly was a master move taking it down to Melbourne and she just got that win on the board down there and gave a lot of confidence. And, you know, I was quite surprised that she drifted so much in, in, in betting with the profile, the way that uh, where she would be in running. And, and she does like soft ground and a fit filly. So, no, they'll do the world 
world of good and uh, she really relished the ground. Quick thought on Satombe before we get to Tommy? Yeah, she was sort of back in the back in the ruck and uh, yeah, she might have, um, she's only a lightly framed filly so we'll go back to the drawing board and see how she, how she fares. Okay, well done getting a win. Thank you. Tommy's giving me the hurry up so let's get to Shani. <laughs> Hurrying you up Ben. Um, tell you what, she worked herself up but she relaxed beautifully in the run for you. Yeah, I was a bit worried when I saw her in the yard and I said to Daz, is this her usual makeup?" And he said, yeah, that's probably, she's probably on her best behaviour today. So, you know, she's had the trip, trip away. She's been very competitive in Melbourne and I think her last trial just showed that that win gave her a lot of confidence because it was a, if you didn't watch it, you wouldn't miss it, you know, but um, she gave me a lovely ride and I was, felt the winner a long way up. Were you surprised at just how she did it with so much ease though? Not really, not, not when I asked her, she just quickened so well, but like I said, I just gained a lot of confidence out of watching her trial after I win and, you know, good Olfans fillies, they really take their time with her. She's still tall and wiry, so she's got to fill out into herself a bit, but um, yeah, next prep she might be a nice filly. Well done, Tom. Thanks, Shan. Three and a quarter lengths by a length, the margins. Three and a quarter lengths, Driftnet beats Lulamon. And as I mentioned, what a preparation Lulamon is having. That's now four minors plus a couple of wins in six starts this prep. A Serene Nick in for third and let me reign fourth. The J-Mac backers, well, not panicking just yet, but at a dollar and five, dollar and six in the jockey challenge, getting a touch nervy with Tommy Berry currently leading on five and James on four. That'll do us four races down. First leg of the quaddy coming up very shortly. He set himself a task, Benny, to run Tommy down. He's had a filthy day, James. He doesn't need me to remind him, but four races down, he's been beaten on a dollar eighty chance, a two twenty chance, and a one sixty chance. He's having a stinker of a day. Poor old James, he'll bounce back no And press are also at $9. So we're keeping Danish Prince uh, safe. There's good late support for it. And Elsie May we're laying. And you can get on for whatever you like, Elsie May. As they load, here's Darren for race five. Field. Chad Schofield, Anthony aboard Elsie May with James McDonald stood down from the remainder of the card. Uh, taking uh, ill. So... Uh, See what happens with the jockey challenge betting. He was a dollar oh five today, James. Destiny's delight moves in now with the white cap, and the light is on, and we're ready to go. Golden Mile standing at Dali Handicap. This has been a feverish betting race. Numerous runners at good odds have been back. The gates crash back and they're off and racing. Flashing Steel and Space Age jump with enthusiasm. Now Danish Prince is rolling up three wide. Sailor four out there in the check cap. Socrates beaten for speed a little bit and is in a very tricky position in the early stages of the race with Presser going forward, then DiMaggio towards the rails. Destiny's Delight. Gazump gets back with Elsie May. or hello, Tide. And the Englishman's going to settle down last of all. Space Age showing plenty of toe here and Space Age is booting up on the inside of Danish Prince. We'll see if Danish wants to go on with the job here. Might just have to sit back. Space Age isn't handing up the lead. And Space Age holds down the front by a half length to Danish Prince. Flashing Steel third on the inside of Sailor. Two lengths to all Hello Tide in the running line and the outside of Presser. Then came Destiny's Delight from DiMaggio, one of the favourites, Elsie May. Gazumpt has been back to big odds as third last from the Englishman and all Hello Tide sees them all. Racing towards the home turn and it's Space Age at the 600, a half to Danish Prince. Then Flashing Steel from Sailor. Further back to Socrates, racing on the outside of Presser and then Destiny's Delight. Elsie May about six or seven off the lead as they come around the corner and at Space Age has been specked in the market today showing a good fight as well, leads by a length and a half to Danish Prince, then Sailor flashing steals back on the inside uh, the Englishman making some ground on the outside of Elsie May, Space Age at the 150, still in front and going well, Space Age oh, full of running at his third Australian start, an aggressive ride early by Molly Burke and Space Age has won it by a space, beating Sailor and Danish Prince, then Elsie May gazumped further back to Socrates, the Englishman, a gap back in the field to Presser from All Hallowed Tide, Flashing Steel, DiMaggio, and last in was Destiny's Delight. 
Well, the drop back from benchmark 78 to 72 grade and a change of tactics there has worked wonders. Molly Burke particularly positive early with Space Age, $9 and $2.80 and has never given the rest a chance. There are a lot happy just to sit back and bide their time. Well, by the time they got moving, this race was over. Sailor and Danish Prince were there up on speed as well, 437 and the 11 gazumped in 4 fourth. But... Yeah, in fact, it's tight between the 11 and the 8. I'll just wait the shutter cam on that front. The 8 will stick the beak down in time for that fourth spot. So four, three, seven, eight. Brad? Here with Elsie May just getting her nose down to grab that fourth position, having got a long way back in the run. It was a very different story for the winner, though. Up on top of the speed, looked to be overdoing it just a touch there early. I can't imagine that was plan A to lead, but uh, when he began so cleanly and just wanted to be there, Molly was happy to go with the flow, and ultimately that won her the race. So an import that has won now at just his third Australian start. He was building up towards something uh, out of the mile now, and that looks to suit. And uh, he ran through the line with a bit of gusto. So a good win from a horse still lightly racing. He might be going places. Sailor stuck on well. He's a well-credentialed wet tracker. Danish Prince looked to get his chance from outside the speed. Continues to race well. Elsie May flashes home. And Gazumped was doing his best work through the line. Uh, the run of a horse that might be looking for that 2,000 metres again. Yeah, and I know it was overseas, but when you look back, Space Age, last preparation, uh, was able to go bang, bang. It starts three and four into the prep. So every reason off the back of today, you can stick solid for next time because this... Uh, this galloper, this four-year-old gelding, certainly seems to hold his form once he's in it. Nice run. Was it plan A, B or C to lead? Uh, probably D. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, got, he got running a bit there. Uh, just wanted to come out neutral, get him to relax, find a rhythm. Uh, because he's been, without putting in his race, he's been travelling a bit strong. Uh, but he had other ideas there. And yeah, once he got to, got to the front, actually, mid-race, he started to relax. Uh, he's a horse who uh, does enjoy those conditions. Typical European, he will keep improving. Uh, second run was better in his first run. He's improved again, he will just keep improving. He's, he is a horse, obviously, at this time of the year, uh, he will keep going through the grades. Loves those wet conditions. And yeah, uh, while still doing plenty of things wrong, uh, he managed to win. And yeah, that's great. Clearly relish getting up to the mile as well after two probably less than suitable 1,400 metre runs. Uh, yeah, that's right. And he will go up in trip uh, in time, uh, but he just needs to learn. Uh, to relax, but yeah, great to get a win. Uh, his horse was still not fully sold, uh, still 10% left to sell there, so I think that's a pretty good advertisement. Yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive after that. Well done, Joe. Congratulations to you and to Kieran Ma's team. Let's get to Shani with Molly Burke, who keeps doing this in the midweeks. She does, and that's your first ride for the stable and a win. Uh, take us through the run, because I know you weren't plan A, B or C wasn't to lead. Yeah, exactly. Um, never had that in mind, but look, the instruction was just to keep him happy and we where he's comfortable without fighting him, so I jumped him out and lucky no one crossed real quick, so I was able just to let him take his time to get him rhythm and not have to fight him too much and it worked out perfectly. By the end, it was like a track gallop for him. So. He did it with ease, didn't he? Yeah, he definitely did. Um, he went through his gears beautiful and I think he actually enjoyed being in front. Every time I felt like they come into his eyesight a bit, he had another gear to give. <laughs> Well done, and I'm sure you'll be getting many rides off them for that. Thank you. Absolutely. She's proving pretty popular as an apprentice, Molly Burke. She's going from strength to strength, and doesn't she know how to steal a race? Shoots to the front and gives them no chance. Space Age too good, beats Sailor, Danish Prince third, and Elsie May just getting a bit too far out of its ground in for fourth. Four, three, seven, eight, first leg of the quaddy. Uh, cool jakey, best back to beat it, and the worst result from a tab point of view. Uh, let's get to Darren as they load. Three more to move in. And a dollar sixty Kirkwell and a one by nearly ten on debut at Kembla. But James McDonald out of play now. Zach Lloyd picks up the plum ride here on Kirkwell. Rebel Shadow moves in along with Need Some Luck. So we're getting close to action now. This over 1,300 metres. Needs some luck drawn wider out today and accredited on his outside. They're all set, racing now. And they've all jumped out in a pretty even line. Kirk Whalen's up there contesting the lead with Cool Jake in and uh, credited right there as well. Need some luck's out a little bit deep with Vintage Choice pushing through on the rails. 
Then came Man de Boss from Brenner and Rebel Shadows last of all with the blinkers on today. Cool Jakey races to a clear lead and accredited gets to a clear second. They're followed then by Vintage Choice needs some luck and Kogwalan in the fifth position at the moment covering a bit of ground. Further back to Rebel Shadow from Man de Boss and Brenner sees them all. So Cool Jakey in front by a length to accredited. Needs some luck now strides to third. From Vintage Choice Kogwalan, Rebel Shadow from Brenner and Man the boss last of a bunch field cool jakey in front from a credit who gets within a half now needs some luck within a half of him and two further back to kirk whalen just being nudged along as they turn cool jakey goes for home of the top of the straight cool jakey opened up by two and accredited needs some luck running on and then came kirk whalen it's cool jakey a length clear from needs some luck then kirk whalen accredited has dropped off cool jakey still in front of the hundred cool jakey a length and a half clear from kirk whalen and needs some luck Cool Jakey clinging on and Cool Jakey. The blinkers did the trick. Cool Jakey ahead on the line, Kirk Whalen. Needs some luck third, accredited fourth. A gap back to Vintage Choice, Manda Boss Brenner and Rebel Shadow was last in. Oh, Cool Jakey, Nashra Willa. That was a beautiful steer. Took this horse to the front and proved too strong late. Number one, Cool Jakey. The blinkers going on again. Joe Pride knows there's going to be improvement out of that first up run. We saw it last preparation. We've seen it again here. Kigwalen. Maybe not the preferred going towards the inside. Things got a little sticky when they opted to take a sit. They jumped really well, had the option to sit outside the leader, opted for the cover, and in the end they've run that horse down to a half head or so. So it was a fantastic run, but maybe just not the race for Kugwalan today, and I'm sure there'll be a second career victory in that horse very shortly. Need some luck loomed, probably had its chance, and the stable mate accredited had the leaders back and was ultimately no match. But cool Jakey, fantastic. He was brave, wasn't he? 62 and a half kilos on his back, he made the running, you could see he was out on his feet that last 100 metres, he had a horse to his outside, a horse to his inside coming at him and two pretty smart three year olds at that, but he stuck on, so second up, blinkers on went to the front and under, under the urgings there of Nashuella was just a little bit too good, take nothing away from Kirk Whalen, I know he was rolled at $1.50 but I think he learned something from that, just to settle in behind the speed and as you say Ben, it did get a little bit tricky there uh, when Needs some luck, whipped up on his outside, he was pocketed momentarily, he hit the line like He'll be winning plenty more races. Needs some luck. Uh, boxed on well. He's still got some upside. And accredited, having settled outside the lead, grabs fourth. Yeah, we saw last preparation, Joe, the same thing. And a big improvement from first up to second up. Blinkers went on here, and that was a different cool Jake here today. Yeah. Look, he's he's um, he's effective on, on wet ground, which he had first up, but he had a really awkward draw and didn't really want to give him a um, too tough a run first up and try and drive him forward in a race that already had a heap of pace, whereas this race today it looked like it would set up nice, nicely for him. And uh, it did, and here on his home track, on, even though he had to carry that weight, he raced really well. Sometimes you don't need to send through a change of tactics. You just book Nashra Willer and you kind of know what you're going to be getting. Yeah, well, there was a few people questioning why I was letting him carry that big weight. But if you, you know, if you put a, if he had a three kilo kit on him today and he had 50, you know, who weighs 50 kilos, he's going to be carrying 10 kilos of dead weight. You know, Nash was all strength and that's what that horse needed the last part of the race. Good group of owners here by the sounds. It's a big group of owners. They've got two. They've got the one in the next as well, a stadium of Starla, so. Oh, it looks a live chance. Best of luck in the Civic Stakes to Joe Pride and the rest of the ownership team. Well, Nashra Willa returns and certainly got the best out of Cool Jakey today. The margin, not a big one, but a significant one for a big group of owners that are here on track today. And Estadio Mastea certainly does loom as a, a good chance in the Civic Stakes. Meant to be run on Saturday, uh, but raced here at Warwick Farm at the midweeks with that rain uh, on Saturday. We'll get to Shani in two ticks. Nash is just having a chat to the owners, but impressive, wasn't it, Shani? It was impressive, yes, and he remains that. He's got that unbeaten uh, second up record. Nash, well done. It looked like it was set up beautifully for you, and it did. Yeah, great, Shani. Yeah, look, he's, uh, he jumped so well. Um, you know, I was able to be really positive on him and, and, and really take control of the race in the first hundred. And, um, you know, I felt like he sort of pricked his ears, and I was able to let him quicken 600 from home. And, and uh, out in your mouth stuff for the last hundred. <laughs> did he feel like he, did the other two sort of urge him on that last little bit because he looked like he was all out? Uh, I just think he, he thought his job was done. I wanted to come back in the mountain. I'd never picked. That's what it felt like to me. But um, yeah, look, full credit to everyone. He's he's a horse with the uh, you know lovely ability, and um, you know they picked up a nice confidence confidence building race. He could go to a Saturday and be very competitive. Well done. So, He's a four-time winner now in nine career starts. So cool, Jakey building a. 
a pretty handy record and for Nasher Willer. Again, he claws another one back in that premiership race. Uh, still a double figure lead. I'll update you on that a little bit later on in the meeting. But numbers here, 1, 11, 6 and 8. We've got the feature coming up next. The Civic Stakes of the 1400 metres. First run in 1950. And it's great to have a feature race here at Warwick Farm, albeit with the washout there on the weekend. We'll be back for that shortly. First use of this distance today, 1,400 metres. There's the light, and we're ready to run. Estadio Mastea, a clear favourite. Stutter about to press the button. Racing now, off here in the Civic Stakes. And they've jumped out in a good line. Uh, Excelidus has ridden with plenty of vigour. Pushing forward pretty smartly. Excelidus together with Gravina. Rise of the Masses. Straight Ace are pretty handy as well. And now Tamer Lane's going right up the inside. Mirror view out deep on the outside of Estadio Mastea. They're followed for the back by Jojo as a man. Diamond Diesel. Then came Asana. Substantial's well back. And Flying Crazy settles last of all. So it's Rise of the Masses and Gravina the joint leaders. Tamer Lane's pinching. Good ground on the the fence pushing into third underneath straight Acer. Astadia Mastea fifth, soon six as Miraview goes up on the outside together with Excelidus. Further back to Jojo as a man from us on the rails. Diamond Diesel substantial and a length and a half to Flying Crazy. 600 out. Rise of the masses, a half length clear from Gravina. Miraview strides to third off the track. Straight Ace is pushing through the middle. Then Tamerlay wedged away on the inside. Diamond Diesel's in the middle of the ruck. They're very tightly bunched. Oh, Excelidus got a bad check there, turning for home. Rise of the Masses in front. Straight Acer is doing the chasing together with Estadio Mastea and further back to Tamer Lane at Straight Acer and Estadio Mastea at the 150. Straight Acer's fighting hard. Diamond Diesel's on the scene now. Here's Diesel with a big run. Oh, what a campaign he's having. Diamond Diesel runs away with the Civic Stakes, beating Estadio Mastea and Asson got through to run third. Then Substantial. Straight Acer really tired the last bit from Jojo as a man. Excelidus, no luck there on the corner. Tamer Lane dropped out from Flying Crazy. A gap to Miraview, Rise of the Masses and Gravina. Oh, what a story, Diamond Diesel. We spoke to his trainer pre-race. For Andy Adkins, this is a big moment. I know this is a jockey that's won a Group 1, several other group races, wins at listed level, but it has been a while between drinks. It's a huge moment for him to take out this Civic Stakes. And to the trainer, oh, Adam Duggan, first listed winner with a horse that was never even meant to be his was meant to head overseas, went there, fractured a shoulder, came back. They've put so much time and effort into a horse that's, you know, hasn't got the career record that kind of befits a seven-year-old, has only had the 20 career starts prior to now, and that's win number eight, first at listed level, fantastic performance. The Stadio Mastea in for second was game, and the five will ultimately run third in S on along the fence. But well done to Adam Duggan and the team. Yeah, so many great stories to spin from that victory. The Andrew Adkins one, as you say, the horse himself, and, and Adam Duggan, everybody associated with the stable. So it was a little bit nervous there halfway down the straight. Would have liked to have seen a live shot uh, of Adam there, just bullocking into the clear, but once he saw a bit of daylight and Andrew Adkins showed a bit of patience, he exploded and not only won, he won really well uh, with his head on his chest. So he's a horse that is in fine form at the moment. Estadia Mastea uh, fought on doggedly there in second. Uh, Esson was right up the fence and straight Acer tried hard. Maybe wasn't all that comfortable in the conditions, but another win isn't far away for him. But the story is no doubt all about the winner, Diamond Diesel. Uh, yeah, his first listed victory and he's certainly deserved it. Absolutely, and so do does this man, Adam Duggan. Congratulations. First listed win, and with a horse we spoke pre-race, maybe touch and go whether it was your best horse, but now I don't think there's any doubt. Yeah, exactly. No, he is for sure. Yeah, and he's... Uh it just fills you with a lot of confidence. He's, um, <clears throat> he's uh, not that trickier horse to train. Um, just got to leave him alone and space his runs. Um, look, I've just got to mention my staff at home. They did such a good job. He doesn't want me to mention him, but uh, Chris O'Brien rides him work and he does a fantastic job. Um, he probably wouldn't be racing these races without him.
Former Group 1 winning jockey in his own right, an absolute star. Um, Andy Adkins, his only ride here today, and he's won a Group 1 himself, but that said, it has been a while between drinks, and this is a big moment for him too. Yeah, exactly. I, did, I knew the moment, you know, it's only a listed race, but I knew the moment wouldn't worry Andy. He's a pretty cool customer, and uh, you give him the right ride too today. So, no, massive thanks to him, and uh, thanks for taking the ride too. And he's just taking his time, making his way back. So just give everyone who's maybe unaware a bit of background on this horse who had a, a fractured shoulder overseas and then lobbed in your hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a massive thanks to Mark Newnham as well from uh, Hong Kong now. Um, uh, he sort of passed these owners on to me as he had too many horses while he was here. And uh, it was quite a, had a quite a few horses and said, go and pick out a couple. And he was the first one. I mean, a mate of mine, Logan Salvador, picked. So... Um, but look, uh, I think uh, the fact that he'd been left so long and um, you know, really, really matured, he just needed to learn a bit of racecraft and he always had the ability there, but uh, he's just, um, you know, as he, as he gets more experienced, um, he just keeps raising the bar. You could take some beating in that South Grafton Cup. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Congratulations. What an effort. And to Andy Adkins as well, a big win for him, Shani. Indeed. You would have been a little bit disappointed that the races were off on Saturday. You only had to wait a few more days and it's paid dividends. Yeah, certainly, Shani. Um, thought he was a great chance on Saturday. I thought he was a great chance today, um, especially down the weight. It was a step up in class for him, but when you really look into it, it wasn't too much of a step up for him. Um, and, I um, mean, he got a perfect run today. He jumped well, put himself into a spot where I was happy. He was comfortable, um, got in a really good rhythm. It was just a bit of a waiting game in the straight, just for a couple of them to drop, drop off and find that little bit of fresh air. And when they did, he exploded. He, he hit the line very strong. Did you think those gaps were going to open? It was a little bit of argy-bargy up in front of me, and it was getting tighter and tighter by the second. So I was, uh, I was thinking, geez, I hope this does open up, because I've got a lot, lot of horse underneath me. But... Um, to his credit, when it did, he, he certainly let rip. Good to get a feature win. You've had a fair bit of time on the sidelines. Injury prone, but good to be back. Yeah, certainly it's good to be back. I've been back a week, week, week yesterday. So, um, yeah, certainly, certainly awesome, especially get a stakes too, but couldn't be for a better fella. Thank you. Back with the bang. Well done. Thanks. And we're just about ready to run the last of eight here at Warwick Farm. 11 on the card at Rose Hill on Saturday, a 10.30 a.m. start. We're just about right. Set. Off and racing in the last, and Vegas right a handle the start well with Bundina and Divine Vicky going forward. So Dipsy Doodle into a forward roller. One Destiny's pushing through as well, followed by Flying Destiny. Then came Oryx on the rail. Rebel Dean just behind the main pack. Now two lengths further back to Peace and Ello out wide in the white cap. Going up on the outside of Acapella Sun, then Septime from Marnix. And Royal Invader is the last one. Vegas Raider takes a clear lead now from Dipsy Doodle at the 600. One Destiny tugging along in third, two off to Warwick, followed by Divine Vicky, Flying Destiny, Bundina very wide, further back to Sunshine Rebel Dean is looking for gaps from Acapella Sun, Pisanello stands them a big star but getting to the outside Vegas Raider swings in front Flying Destiny goes to it quickly Bundina's running on nicely the outside inside the 200, Vegas Raider, one Destiny and Bundina Dipsy Doodle running on on the inside there's a wall coming down the outside one Destiny, Vegas Raider Acapella Sun late one destiny beat Vegas Raider and Acapella Sun third I'm not sure about fourth they're everywhere Pisanello down the outside from Bundina Dipsy Doodle then Flying Destiny from Divine Vicky uh, further back to uh, Royal Evader uh, Sun Chime and the last to finish was Sep Time Oh, congratulations, Molly Burke. It's been a big day for her in the city. Gets another win, this time for Gary Nixon with one destiny. That's win number seven at start number 42 for a very talented son of Super One. Fantastic course, and at the 1100 here, always proves tough to beat. So $6 and $2.10, Vegas Raider was showing so much speed early and has only been nabbed the final 50 or so. It's been an enormous run. It is a photo for the miners. To my eye, Archipelago Sun might have stuck the beak out in time to just beat Peace and Ello, Brad. Yep, Archipelago Sun will get that third spot. But one destiny, isn't he in a rare patch of form at the moment? So he's now won two of his past three. Molly Burke certainly has the key to this horse. It doesn't really matter where he is in the run as long as he's comfortable. Uh, and that seems to be the key to him. So continues his winning ways. Vegas Raider 
flew the lids, didn't he? He came out with a wing on every hoof. And You've got a lot of very happy owners keen to have a chat. We'll only steal you for a minute or so first. Congratulations, it's been a big day for you. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, pretty exciting. On Saturday, the uh, previous win, I thought I might have got my first Metro double, but it definitely came today, so it was good. <laughs> it did. Yeah, I'm fortunate that we had the rain delay uh, Saturday's meeting, but it's lovely to be here and you've ridden very well. Tell me about this galloper and how you felt today. Yeah, look, um, he's just loving life at the moment. Um, he came out and we had one, um, two starts back here and went and ran a very honest race at Rose Hill there. And off that, I thought, as long as he's happy and can overdo that draw, he was a good chance today and he showed it on the soft track. He loves it. Were you always confident of picking up the leader? Um, I would hope so. He travelled like he's a horse that you can't push, you can't pull. You've just got to trust him and he does. He takes you there and you don't quite know how much you have until the straight, but he puts you in at the moment, so it's good. <laughs> well done on the double. Thank you.